Okay, so this is one of the buildings I own here, <clears throat> built 1905. Um, I just got a vacancy on the third floor apartment. Uh, this one's got four units, one down there. Uh, one entrance is a private entrance on the side. One unit there. A little balcony. But where we're going, right up here. Now, this unit, um, the tenant patched some walls for me, which is really kind. Um, this is the small, smallest one bedroom. But it's still a good size. Like, this is the master bedroom, or the, I guess, bedroom. Uh, it's got a really deadly view. You can't see anything today, but you can see right over the whole water. Um, this is a great area of town, old. You know, we got cast iron rads, big closet space here. Um, this building's got all uh, hardwired, uh, interconnected with pole station smoke detectors. Um, this is the living room here. Good size. I got a couch left behind. I get to yard outside. Oh yeah. But like where we are here, that is this is not gonna do it justice. But that is all past there is all the lake. And on a beautiful clear day, this has such a great view of the city. And it's just an awesome, awesome view. So this is a kind of a cool apartment. Uh this uh this is the kitchen here. It had an update uh, back a while ago, kind of when I bought the place. I put new cabinets, um, dishwasher, you know, very basic small kitchen. This is good, like one, one single guy's moving in here. So it's, you know, it's a perfect kind of single, single guy place, uh, apartment size stove and fridge. Um, I got 200 amp service electrical in the basement and then it kicks it up to a panel up here, which I've done my best to try to label and change out little fuses. They're all the push style fuses besides the one that, uh, the one up here, I guess is a tw 20 amp style outlet. So it's uh, it's got a regular fuse on it. You know, newer cabinets, um, all the plumbing has been updated up here, you know, to, to uh, be a more leak free, you know, I put all new uh, mulling faucets in here and stuff when I uh, got the place. Uh, we got a cool little track light up there. You know, it's a cool little attic apartment, good little bachelor pad. But this is where the work's getting done. Like, obviously, I got some walls to touch up and stuff for whatever. Uh, but the ma majority of the work is getting done right in here. This is the uh, four piece bath. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward. I put this vanity in here uh, when I bought the place. It's got to come out because unfortunately, you can't really see, but all the pipes the water pipes go down and into the floor, which is kind of sad. So it's going to be a pain to get out. So I got to get that out today because this floor is all coming up. You can't really tell, but this floor has got about a, probably about a half inch slope from the end of the wall there to the door entrance here. Uh, everything on this side of the house has a little bit of a slope and it was just because of the way they put the new, uh, when they put all the new beams in the basement, the basement was all redone. And I guess they didn't lift part of the house quite enough and everything's got a bit of a slope, which is really minor um, for the age of the house being that it's, you know, 110 years old. Um, the, the only problem is uh, in a bathroom, a slope on the floor is, is not a good thing to have. Because um, as soon as that tub gets a slope, what'll happen is your water's gonna run, hit the side and it's gonna run down or it's gonna run down on the floor or whatever. So you want your tub to be really level. And also if the water ends up on the floor, you know, it's right now the way it is, it's just gonna run right out here and go and damage the floor, which you can see there's already water damage to the old original hardwood in that area. So uh, I'm gonna pull up this tile, pull up the subfloor right down to joists, level everything off. Um, put all new uh, plywood down, um, put down um, uh, uh, new new subfloor for a tile. There's gonna be a, just a, a nice ceramic tile on the floor here, or something fairly low maintenance. And then this whole bathtub, um, shower assembly, everything all gets to be removed. And it's on the exterior wall, so I'm curious to see how they did it because we're, you know, it's not uncommon to see minus 50 here in, in Thunder Bay where we are. So uh, 
I'm gonna start by pulling the shower head down or shower uh, rod down, all this uh, uh, different discussion and uh, uh, fixtures and whatnot pull this out of here and I'm going to start taking the tile up um, you know the new tile I'll probably run right over to the window um, just to get rid of any damage that's going to be made to here and then I'll probably run it down and kind of piece it into the floor and then when I do the floor I'm more than likely going to do it do a uh, a small bit of tile up the wall to act as a um, baseboard in this area here it adds a little bit more waterproofing than the wood baseboard um, so we'll see how that's going to go, but I'm going to start today by stripping this this old beginning to mold Bad caulking job finishes failing in the bottom of the tub tub out of here and uh, You know, it's this was done sometime in the 90s and it's just it's at the point where it needs to be done again Hey guys, I'm going to show you a couple how to not <clears throat> install a bathroom um, because everything I run into in this house has some kind of a problem like you know people had good intentions and then they kind of went wrong now you might have been looking at this tub and being like Steve you're drunk this isn't the 90s uh, reno and um, I'm actually just realizing that now this clearly this tub clearly was put in um, before the 90s um, 80s or somewhere around there I'm guessing um, the reason I know is just because the shutoff is all like, br or the drain is all brass and everything and I'm looking at it now and I'm like, you know what, the, the style of the tub and everything, it's, it's clearly older. But I know the work was done here in the 90s, in the early 90s, because this originally wasn't a dormer and this window's new. This used to come down and, and only be like this high. So I'm guessing it didn't have a shower previously and so this is probably all 90s, uh, is what I'm guessing in the tub they must have left in here for when they built the uh, dormer. So somebody, uh, I know the previous owners told me they had, they had popped this dormer in here, which is nice because it gives this, you know, attic style apartment a full size uh, bathroom ceiling. But here's the problems I wanted to point out to you. First of all, um, right here. When you install one of these, um, you should silicone this all the way around here. This should all be silicone. Second thing is there should be silicone around here and there should be silicone around here. So there's a couple issues there because it's going to get in behind uh, and it's just going to make a mess. So um, that's number one. Number two, this is a pretty 90s thing to see. It looks like though they use waterproof drywall, but this is just tile over drywall. So I wouldn't be surprised if we pull some of these tiles off and we see quite a bit of mold in behind this tub. And uh, we're going to use a much better system and I'll show you how it's done and at least how I do it anyway. And on this part of the world, depending on where you're watching, from and uh, you know you'll get a, a good idea is how to um, put in a new uh, shower and how to put in a new floor like with all my videos though I'm not I'm not saying this is the right way to do it I'm not saying this is how you should do it follow your local building codes and uh, consult an independent contractor these are usually a real pain in the ass to get out and uh, it was actually really easy and there was some water staining in the ceiling below this before and I replaced the drywall I couldn't find a leak I had the toilet flush about a thousand times I had the sink run, I had the shower run, I couldn't find the leak. So I thought it was just because of the crooked floor maybe going down in that corner. But removing this, I see a problem. There's no sealant on here and there, whatever there was here, I don't know, it looks like mold. I think the mold was holding it together. There's a good chance there was a leak between here. And these are usually a pain. They, you just unscrew them. Um, but if you look, there's nothing inside even to grab. There's two little tabs that I was able to put my pliers on there and, 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 and unscrew this. And it came out way too easy. Um, a lot of times on these older tubs, I got to get in here with a sawzall, get a couple cuts in this, smack it with a hammer and a pry bar until it turns. But this came out really easy. And I think that was probably a, a spot for leaking. So sure enough, I was correct. There is a level of mold. Really minor though. Um, you know, we see some mold. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of mold on the back of some of this wall board here. You can see it up here. Pretty minor, but typical improper installed shower. Um, there's a bunch of problems. Holes aren't sealed. Uh, drywall used in behind. It is, in fact, a green paper drywall. You can't, you can just see it up in that corner there if you look. So it is a mold and mildew resistant drywall. It just goes to show that's not sufficient for a shower. So uh, I'll show you some of the products I like to use to avoid this as we move along.
Oh yeah, the things you find in an old house. So, uh, tore up the floor and there just happens to be knob and tube live. Uh, it's funny because this house has no fixtures running knob and tube. I've, I've been in every uh, apartment now and changed all the 70s fixtures out and whatnot and there's no knob and tube anywhere unless it's <coughs> simply using this as a junction, a knob and tube junction point. So I'm going to go into the, uh, the only other, the whole main floor as well, the house has been rewired. So I'm going to go into the second floor as we're in the third right now and I'll have the fixtures all tested and then I'll disconnect the legs of those knob and tube and then recheck everything and make sure it's all dead and if it is I'll just leave it disconnected because it's a little concerning knowing that it just uh, vanishes uh, this way and um, is probably not connected to anything and just sitting live somewhere but another concerning thing is that there's just a hidden junction point in the floor so uh, you know sometimes you tear things out to fix things and you find things you don't want to find that's one example Oh yeah, what is this? Standing in a pile of rubble. Oh boy. Okay, so here's where we're at. We got a mess. Good news is, well, it looks like they previously had issues with plumbing before. It looks like when the tub was originally put in, they were using these lines here. <clears throat> and then they, sometime in the 90s when the tub surround was done, they added this newer copper here up to the uh, pressure equalized Moen faucet. So that's kind of where we're at. And a uh, couple, couple issues. Um, first of all, this is an attic space, and it really wasn't insulated or vapored all that well. Uh, the vapor only went down to the tub skirt area. You know, they tried, but it's not right. To the plumber, um, he's agreed to move everything from here over to this side, which works fine with the basement or the bathroom layout. It's going to all go over here. And because the floor is open, it's easy enough to run the pipes up. So that's a good news. Uh, so that's going to get done. Drain, and then uh, there just needs to be um, a vent put in for the uh, tub. So that's all good. The other uh, thing with, is with this knob and tube here. You can see <clears throat> it's tied into that hidden junction point. That is going to be removed today. And that... Uh, we did a test yesterday and just chopped that um, knob and tube out of there and it is in fact dead. It used to supply a couple of fixtures in the main floor and it was still live in the box, which is, or the, sorry, the second floor, which is still live in the box, but it's funny because it was removed. I, I don't know why, I guess the reason it was never fully disconnected is because they didn't know it was at a hidden junction point when the house was rewired um, because I had this whole place, this whole building rewired. Um, anything that was 1920s was removed. So the good news is that can just be removed and that hidden junction point can be uh, brought down to the other ceiling where it's ex it will be accessible. So that's what's gonna get done there. Uh, but at this point here, I got a bunch of rubble. So what I'm gonna do is I'm this morning, I got my uh, dump trailer here. I'm gonna clean up all this rubble. I'm gonna clean up between the floor joists. Oh yeah, dump trailer. So I'm gonna clean up the, between the floor joists and then um, sister all these joists by gluing, screwing, and bolting, making sure they're perfectly level. Um, it looks like it's, it's only out about quarter, three-eighths of an inch at this end, low compared to that end. And it's just simply from, uh, well, a couple things. I think the, the bearing wall is down a little bit, um, but the way they poured the basement, when it was all redone, uh, it, it hasn't moved, it's just the way it is. So in order to get this floor perfectly straight, I'm going to uh, sister all these, um, like I said, glue, screw, bolt. So now that it's cleaned out, I've got these uh, adjustment joists in. And basically they're like a sister, um, but they're just cut off even with the floor because they end up higher than the finished floor. So you can see the difference here. 
Uh, we got a good close to half an inch on these two and then it gets better as it goes on. So it's pretty much, uh, you know, it, it, it reconfirms my uh, thing that the middle of the bearing wall was, was, was poured low. And again, it's not adjustable from the basement. Every spot in this house, in this area has, <coughs> you know, like something like half an inch over six feet or something like that, which isn't super crazy for a hundred and something year old house. But in a bathroom, we really want that tub straight. But here's where it gets interesting is when I get over to where the tub was, they did notch out a joist. So I'm going to run one along there for safe measure. But it... Uh, the, the structure's straight there. Uh, it must be far, far enough over on the beam where, where everything's pretty straight. Like it's within an eighth of an inch or even less. Um, so it's it's so close that I'm not even gonna really bother. I'll level it out, but mainly put it on there just to take care of that. And then um, gluing, screwing, and leg bolting a couple to this one uh, to bring it out. Um, so it's it had there's there's area for the floor to sit on and structure for the tub because uh, the tub weighs a lot You know, we don't like to see a notch like that out of a joist on a tub and really it was unnecessary You know, they probably could have got away with w Without shaving anything off of it just based on where the uh, drain was <laughs> another interesting thing here You know, you sometimes just wonder why your tubs don't drain right That's a cork. That is why you don't drink wine in the shower you might fall and you may or may not plug up your shower drain and uh, I just n noticed that when I yanked it off the old uh, brass but that old brass is getting yarded out of there anyway because this is uninsulated it's all getting moved over there's more than enough room and more than enough slope <coughs> to install everything on this wall so I'll get to that now okay so everything's glued screwed just needs to be bolted um, and it's time for blowing so I uh, sistered that complete one. She's gonna throw a few bolts through it still. It's uh, just gonna help reinforce. You can see it with the glue, my glue sticking out. I didn't bother checking to see where that was. I thought it was low enough on the glue, guess not. It's just a PL adhesive and everything's glued and screwed. So, uh, you know, it's gonna serve for two purposes. Uh, it's gonna help take a little bounce out of the floor, which there really wasn't any. It's pretty pretty solid floor, but it'll help Make sure there's no bounce in the floor to protect the floor tile. Uh, but it's also uh, leveling the floor, right? So now the floor's straight, true, in every direction. Um, you know, within an eighth of an inch or something ridiculous. So I spent quite a bit of uh, time getting it as close as I could. So now the goal is uh, we got to get that trap um, over there uh, with a vent line ran back uh, for, the, um, uh, for the shower drain and move those uh, cold water supplies uh, just o uh, up and over um, and up into here. Get the pressure equalizing fixture mounted, get the trap set up somewhat haphazard, and then uh, start plywooding this. Uh, that has to be replaced, that shut off's about a million years old, uh, and it does leak. It's been dripping just a little bit ever since I shut it off, we'll call it. And this has to be cut out and replaced with a new one. Okay, so a bit of a progress update here. Uh, I just stuck some insulation kind of scraps that I had laying around just to help cut down on sound a little bit. A bit. Bathroom's not really too big of a deal, but I always put them in, especially like in bedrooms and stuff. I make sure. Uh, so I had a little bit of the pink stuff that's a, a sound insulation, and then this it's just a rock soul sound and fire insulation. But anyway, the plumber was here, and uh, he didn't want to be recorded. Uh, can't really blame them. Not everybody's for that. So I uh, um, basically I, I taped off this um, plastic uh, ABS elbow here coming out of the ground for the toilet, uh, which has also been reinforced. So when I put the floor in, I can just tear that out and glue the flange in. That I can do myself, no problem. Uh, we've got a new shut off here on the uh, for the toilet. I extended it up a little bit because it was getting close to the floor. If it had to be cut for service reasons, there was nothing left. So I extended it up and then also it was just wild and wonderful. So it got strapped to the joist. And then the pipes and everything were all moved from this side here, which I'm going to be doing this, fixing this insulation up. And they were ran along uh, this joist and up into this area here. So there's the new shower on the side. So it's now going to be a left hand tub in here. And uh, I've got the board, the pretty board. And all I'm putting in is just a 
basic uh, steel enamel tub. So the new floor is going down. <clears throat> Everything's going pretty good. Um, but because the old floor is technically higher than the new one, in some places, uh, what I've had to do is make sure where the tub skirting is going to sit that is trimmed right with the wall. Right under the tub, I don't really care. And everywhere else, I, I trimmed it. Uh, but because we're going half an inch still, after the tub's installed, this is going to get half an inch higher. So because this is going to, and then it's going to be also the thickness of the tile. So we're talking like over three quarters of an inch, even higher than what it is here. So there is going to be a bit of a transition, unfortunately, here. Just because of the slope, there's nothing you can do about it. You need to build the tile up solid enough where it's going to, uh, you know, you're not going to have any bounce or anything like that. You need to have a good uh, over one inch underneath your tile because your tile will crack. But right now, like this is solid, straight, good subfloor. I just need to cut these last strips and install them and I'm doing them in smaller pieces just because working around the wall is a bit difficult. Uh, but being tongue and groove too, it's it's reinforced, which is nice. So uh, I'll just finish that up and then it's onto this wall getting the um, any compromised insulation replaced, like right here. This is attic space here. Um, this is outside, uh, this is inside. So I'm not gonna bother with the inside portions too much insulating, uh, they could keep the old crap but on the areas where it's attic space and cold space, I'm gonna make sure I get the good insulation in there. I'm gonna bring my vapor down and uh, seal it all up with, with tape and acoustic, even though they didn't originally do it when they did this bathroom anyhow, and this house is a sieve. Uh, but you know, every, every portion I wanna do, I wanna bring up to uh, minimum code. So uh, I'll get to that and then turn the camera on once I get uh, the insulation and vapor done show you that and then uh, install the tub. Oh yeah, here we go. So this is all glued in and installed. You gotta really watch. It's gonna be 15 inch to center to the uh, finished wall. So we're almost perfect. Well, it's a bit twisted right now. When you untwist it, it's got a little bit of movement. It's just about perfect 15 inch center. And it's gonna be two and three quarter height. if you can see that but it's pretty much bang on and then this was fit this area here was fit onto the tub to make sure it fits that specific tub so <clears throat> there's my acoustic sealant down on the bottom uh, up along the top you know it feels a little redundant just because the rest of the house isn't done like that but I guess I'd bring it up to cold when it's open of course right so um, it can get uh, it can get past any inspections now what I have to do is I have to put a brace on the wall here for the tub the manual the tub tells you that as well as the manual tells you the heights and stuff of that double triple quadruple check all your measurements all the time it's incredibly important and now i'm going to bring this out here cut the hole in the floor and get this fit closet latch okay so the sport's been installed level as per the manufacturer's instructions 16 and a quarter to the top um everything's glued up there and the flange is put in with a spacer ring to make up for the uh, cement board. Um, I didn't want it sitting right on the cement board, so I'm going to put it. I put on a spacer ring, and then the cement board will just go around that. So installing the uh, curdy board here, uh, you have to patch over it with thinset. Um, it looks absolutely like hell. Um, that's just because I'm sloppy with the thinset, and you've got to mix it fairly liquid. Uh, I'm obviously not going to thin set this because this is outside the shower area where we shouldn't be getting any water anyway, but everywhere else gets the curdy band and uh, the thin set. Uh, I put a small patch over all the <clears throat> uh, screws and then on the lines uh, where the screws are as well, they get a, um, they just get a, a band so you don't have to put a small uh, piece on. So like on the front wall, for example, there's pieces here and you got to make sure this is embedded really good in the thin set you don't need to cover them in thin set like like here and here it's that's just again sloppy um, but they do have to be fully have full thin set on the back um, and it has to be an unmodified style thin set so we're gonna dry fit our uh, uh, cement board or uh, wonder board this stuff's designed for floors and what it's gonna do is uh, well a few things first of all OSB is a terrible crummy um, bond for tile 
but one of the biggest things is wood expands and contracts. This will not. So this will lock everything up and make everything solid. And uh, with this stuff, it's actually nice. You don't even have to tape the edges as long as you're going factory seam to factory seam. You just run thin set down there and screw it all down in there and it, it uh, locks it up to the next panel. So you want to dry fit everything so it's all nice and tight. And I just got to cut around for those pipes. Those pipes are hidden anyway. I'm going to go over them with the tile just in case there's any water, just to keep any water, potential water from going into the floor. But really, you know, this is a bathroom floor. It shouldn't be like a pool or anything. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, install this. And what we do is we put a, a thin set mortar down with a notch trowel. And then you push this down into the thin set mortar and we use a modified that sticks to you uh, to uh, osb and then uh, you screw um, the edges every four inches and then six inches in in between and then it's a good solid base for the tile which i'll be laying uh, tonight on the floor and on the wall and then uh, i'll be getting into um, i guess i'm pretty much at that point getting into doing the uh the shower area so just like tiling use your notch trowel to set the height of the notches and trowel it on half of the floor so you can put one half down and then work on the other half the floor it's shiny right now because it's wet but you know lay it in the uh, staggered brick pattern chip pattern whatever you want to call it cut around the openings uh obviously the vanity goes back in here so it's going to cover a lot of this floor i'm just getting ready to grout <clears throat> Now, um, just a note on installing tiles. Um, mix up your thin set. Uh, I like to do a little bit less at a time. Now, like if you use a five gallon pail, you know, don't mix the whole damn thing. It'll dry out before you're done using it. So, um, a few notes on installing tile over this uh, concrete board. First, follow the instructions for mixing through the manufacturer. Uh, work from a couple different boxes. This was only two boxes, so it wasn't very hard to do and shuffle the tiles up so you don't get color variances uh, too much in them. Uh, make sure you move them and spin them a few times so you don't get too many repeating patterns. And uh, grab yourself a trowel uh, for the for the floor uh, floor tile on this. This is just a, qu a quarter inch notch. And um, make sure when you apply your thin set to your um, floor, you uh, let it uh, stand on those ridges. This these spots here should uh, scrape against the floor and then these should be your high spots and you just uh, then you set your towel into that. Um, always remember to have a small trowel with you and put just a scrape layer of um, thin set over the back of the tile. It's called uh, back buttering. It's very important to do that when you're installing a floor um, or your tiles probably will not bond properly and they may pop up or break grout. Um, that's important on a very, very important. That's one of the biggest things is make sure your floor is solid and make sure you back butter your tiles. You know, if your cuts aren't perfect and stuff, you know, like I got all everything lined up pretty good here, you can see. But you know, if you've got some issues with your cuts and your cuts aren't perfect, you know, that's one thing. Uh, another thing is for the whole job to fail because of a, a misstep. So just make sure you do that. Um, NAMO to mix the grout to the manufacturer's instructions, push it in all these uh, cracks. This floor is almost dry. You can see a lot of it, the shine's gone now. And I just cleaned up any, there was a couple areas where a little bit of thin set squeezed out, so I cleaned those up. And now I'm gonna grout, push the grout in, uh, let it sit for the 15 minutes, and then uh, wash it off, come back in an hour, and I'm gonna give it a, um, or a couple hours, give it a, let it set up. The trick is when you push the grout in, and the first time you rinse it, it's not only just like to get the excess grout off the tile, but it's also to tool the joints and make them uh, the, the proper shape. So you're gonna use your grout sponge and um, after you float it in and really pay attention to what you're doing um, make sure there's no thick grout left on the tiles and make sure that your grout lines are all uh, nice and even uh, a little bit below the surface uh, but not right recessed down obviously but just enough below the surface where they're not bulging out and uh, you should have a good grout finish and then once all the tiles are clean a few hours later you can come back and you can clean up the haze but by then you won't disturb the grout that's already dry so after uh when you tool the joints, this is what you should be left with. Don't overwater it. If you get too much water on the floor, wipe it up right away. This is going to haze up really bad. It's already started to in some areas. But what we're looking for is if you look at the grout lines, they're set nice. Okay? 
they're just below the surface but they're not dug down in no places are they proud or coming over the tile they're all in the grooves where they should be that's what's important after you let the tile set up or the grout set up so grout with your float on a steep angle push your grout in deep scrape it all off with a 45 trying not to leave big globs and chunks let it sit 10 to 20 minutes pretty much until everything looks like it's starting to lock up and then uh, come on in with your damp sponge and tool all the joints and wipe any you don't want big globs of thin set over anything uh, so this is just a bit of a footprint for me but you don't want any globs of, of thin set over anything because it's really hard to wash off later so this is almost like other than the haze this is the finished look you're going to end up getting so that's why this step is important and you really a lot of people don't spend time they just wash them down you got to spend time and you got to uh, gently go over these to see where you know and, and take a little bit off at a time keep cleaning your sponge until it's down to where you want another note is along the bathtub i did push grout into the small crack along the bathtub um, but I made sure with the sponge that I took that grout almost all the way out, left it really, really thin. Reason being is the tub will always move a little bit versus the floor, and that grout there is not gonna last. So you're probably like, well, why the hell you do it? You do it so it looks good, and then what we're gonna do is once we clean the skirting of the tub up really good before this bathroom's put into service, we're gonna take a, a thin bead of clear silicone and run it along uh, between the tub and the tile. That'll hold the grout in place, um, that's important you don't want that coming back out um, it's going to create a, a waterproof spot right there which is also important and uh, it'll keep everything looking good so that's where we should be now so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm running out of days here so that's why I'm kind of blitzing through this um, what, what I'm going to do is when I uh, get back here you'll see the camera back on but next time it's back on I'm going to start setting the tile along the um, the wall and the reason I did that is I want to put the vanity and have it butt up to the vanity. So I'm just going to take this crack down here and uh, behind the vanity and fill that with silicone just in case any water tries to migrate under there. And then from the vanity on, I'm going to do a, um, a border with tile. And uh, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to cut the, the tile into four inch pieces. It's going to run four inches up the wall and have a, a nice silver trim along the top of it to clean it up. So uh, I'm gonna do it all the way along here, uh, a little chunk here, and then the bathtub's uh, tile's gonna be wider and it's gonna uh, come right into it. And the reason I'm gonna make it wider is to cover up any damage to the wall that was uh, made by uh, pulling the old wall board out and putting the, the curdy up. So that's uh, where we're at. Now I'm gonna let this dry, uh, stay off it for about two hours. Once everything looks like it's the grout lines have dried, I'm gonna put the uh, sink and uh, sink in put the uh, tile around the border and then I'm going to go ahead and install the toilet uh, so I have a functional washroom in here while I work which is always nice. So for just a few bucks like I think this cost me like $25 I did a little uh, backsplash around the um, sink. It, it was in here before and this this sink was previously installed and uh, the walls were kind of getting a little bit damaged they're still a little gross I'm going to wipe them down I stuffed some insulation behind this, the taps to hold it because the wall had a little woo that way and I wanted to kind of have the aluminum sort of glue up and get close to the wall. But I'm still going to run a really thin bead of caulk all the way around everything, uh, just clear. Um, it, it really tiny thin bead, it kind of takes up the gap, makes everything look better and nice, you know, clean. So that's just drying up, locking up now. Uh, the floor has been walkable for a few days. I haven't grouted the lines here yet. But I used the same aluminum strip along it and just made a uh, butt uh, joint in the middle or in the corner. And they just need to be grouted still, but I'm not going to bother grouting them right away. And I line them up since it is a stagger pattern. I, I just line them up with the, the tiles. So, you know, so far this is kind of what we got here for this little bathroom. So it's starting to look a little nicer. Uh, again, you know, this is... This is a rental, so I'm not going all out, but I do want it to be nice and I do want it to last. And that was the reason for the good prep of the floor, solid, uh, you know, moving the plumbing fixtures over, that sort of thing. So now I'm going to get to doing the, uh, uh, the wall tile. For cutting holes around uh, a pipe like that sticking out, there's a cool little tool you can use. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works.
This is uh, just a basic little tool here for uh, cutting, and it cools it with water. So basically how this works is we uh, stick one of these rings on it that come with it. It's got some two-way tape. Doesn't have to be exact because it's a little larger. And then you peel the bottom of the two-way tape off and you stick it over center. Now I've put just a little dot for center, but this is this hole is almost twice as big as it needs to be. <clears throat> just because I bought it to accommodate a couple different pipe sizes. So now you see it's mounted on there like that. So all you do now once it's mounted on the clean tile is you put a little bit of water. So I'll grab here. water inside this fun little jig. That's a little much. That's okay. Just dump a bit of that out and then you mount this in your drill and you put it on something that you could drill through, not this countertop obviously, and uh, you just go ahead and drill it. Now you have yourself a water-cooled bit, and uh, I'll tell you it works good. You get minimal chipping, and I was even cutting that pretty quick, you get minimal chipping. The trick is when you first start cutting it, hold your saw at a little bit of an angle, it makes it just big enough to do that, and it'll cut a little bit of a C-shape, and then as you start straightening it out, it won't walk, um, because that little jig doesn't quite hold it from walking, and you'll have a good cut to put your pipe around. All right, this is where I'm at. I have gone around the tub. I've decided to go over to cover the drywall issues that were caused by pulling the old tub out. Uh, so I'm gonna just <clears throat> go up this doorway here and uh, go up to the top. Now what I've done here is I've uh, put the bottom uh, course of tiles on. They are straight, they are perfect. The lines line up. The joints are all excellent, like as good as the walls allow, we'll say. Everything is nice. Um, I got my strip going up here already. You know, I just gotta throw a little more uh, thin set on it and and uh, crank it as I go up. And then the towel's just gonna cut nicely around here. Follow this and then go back over here and then go up. And again, the reason I'm doing that is to cover up the walls, the blemishes, the problems that were caused by pulling the tub out without getting really deep into because, um, you know, what's the point if you stop here and you got to put your tram or you stop here? You know, it's a few more dollars a tile. Uh, it looks pleasant and uh, it just saves me a step in drywall because I already had to fix some drywall there and where I poked the tub through the wall, I've already put in a patch and taped it. And I speed set, so uh, I didn't really need to use speed set, but it's what I had laying around here at the uh, rental property. So I'm just going to tomorrow put a... Uh, a good smooth coat over that and it should be ready to pretty much sand out and good to go. So to avoid patching and painting more, which the paint in this bathroom is only a year old, um, besides a, a little touch of up here, which I have a gallon, I, I've decided to come out to the end. Take your time, use tile spacers, use whatever you can find. I used a, a little washer here because this tile cut was slightly off and I wanted to level that tile perfect, so I used a, a spacer. Now I'm gonna let this all lock up overnight, and then I'm gonna come in tomorrow, 
clean. The tub looks like I've totally wrecked it. It's not. It's just dusty. I've been cleaning it as I go. Uh, a couple little streaks of thin set that'll just rub off. So tomorrow I'm going to come in with this tile all set up and I don't have to worry about touching it at that point. I'm going to clean the tub. I'm going to plastic the tub properly so it's fully protected and I'm going to go to town and bring these all the way up to the ceiling. Uh, it's going to be awesome. The only weird cut I have to do is around here which is easy because it ends up on a kind of sort of on a halfway. So all I'm going to do there is uh, I don't have to even use a grinder. I can just make a bunch of thin little finger cuts and snap them off. Uh, it could be a bit jagged, it doesn't matter, that's under the, the plate. And then I got that one up there which I'll use that same water bit I showed you to do that. So next time you see this I'll be up the wall and done. Just make sure if you're going to stop for the night or something you scrape off your thin set. Remember to set your tiles over your curdy board with um, uh, an un unmodified thin set, that's what the curdy manufacturer uh, recommends. Here's a hint when you uh, when you get up to the uh, mosaic area that of course you're going to do because it just looks beautiful. Uh, once you set the tiles, gently go over them with a grout float and uh, give them a little push into the wall. Now that will help level everything so you don't have one sticking out all crazy. And then get a good look down the side of them and make sure they're not all uh, crazy and bouncing around. This will help level everything. Sometimes you gotta give them a good push. Sometimes you just gotta give them a little light tap. But do that and that'll get you rolling. Okay, so I got all the grout done. It's really dark right now because it's uh, it's still in the wet stage. It's gonna dry to like more of a color like that. Like almost similar to the tile, which is kind of cool. Even though the dark doesn't give us some nice contrast. And uh, Basically, I'm at the stage now where <clears throat> I put the grout on, I uh, wiped it down, and uh, tooled all the joints, made sure everything was, all the joints were nice and flat, and uh, you know, a little bit of a haze came. Now I'm gonna, it's actually not too bad though, I'm surprised it, it wiped off as good as it did. And you know, as long as you get the stuff off, like trim like this, the second time around, we'll get the rest of this little bit off. So you don't have to worry about that, or a little bit on the wall, that'll come off. Um, you know, even with a dark gray, uh, I would worry about blacks and whatnot staining, but with this dark, even this fairly dark gray, this all comes off pretty easy. So, um, what I've done is I've put in the small line around the edge, I've put silicone, or, um, grout. And, uh, so I'm going to take silicone next, go around here. Once this grout's dry, which will probably take about two hours or so, I'm going to put silicone around here. I'm going to pack silicone, uh, uh, around there, pack silicone around there after after this is screwed in. Um, and uh, put the plate on. I'm gonna put silicone in behind the plate and put silicone around the top and just leave the bottom open just in case something gets in there, but that's gonna be pretty sealed up. Uh, it's one of these plates here. So it already has a gasket on it. And in fact, Moen does the same thing. They run the gasket most of the way down. But I'm going to just put a little bead again as well, just for extra safety. Really small one that won't look ugly. And uh, I've got that temporary crystal handle on there, which to me looks gross. I've got a chrome one that matches. Okay, so this is it for Project Bathroom. You can get a decent look at what was done. Nice new solid flat tile floor. Nice new tub, nice new tub surround. Everything's tight, right? Siliconed, working beautifully. Waterproof, right? And ready for a tenant to move in. Plumbed properly. Everything's in good shape. Toilet works well. Flush as well. No leaks. Of course, as usual, no silicone around the base of the toilet. It's always a bad idea. Uh, reason being is, if you have a leak in your wax seal, you want to be able to see it on the floor before it damages other things. You want to see it with some, some wetness, which wax seals leak, it does happen. So there's the bathroom and it is complete.
Thanks for watching. Post any comments, questions, concerns, as usual.